Hi everybody! Welcome back or welcome if this is your first time here. So as you can probably tell from no upload on Monday morning, I took a break from Vinyl Monday. I took a week-long break after my really big season one finale. I did a deep dive on Layla and I decided in the meantime that I would do something fun. So I posted to my Instagram and my community tab on my channel asking for questions to answer. I've decided to do a Q&A today. Going forward, if you wanna see kind of some more fun stuff like this, uh, keep an eye on my community tab. I'm gonna start using that more. And I figured a Q&A might work since, you know, you look at me, you, you click on one of my videos and all of this, and people tend to have a lot of questions. So let's get into the Q&A, let's start this off. Let's find a question to start off with. Oh, this is a good one, yeah. Axel asks, Susie Cream Cheese, what's gotten into you? Uh, to tell you the truth, man, I don't know. I don't know what my problem is. <laughs> David asks, have you managed to add any more Bowie to your collection? <sighs> no. Listen, you guys, I collect albums at a snail's pace. Uh, Space Oddity asks, what's your favorite Queen album slash what are your favorite Queen songs? And Ian asks something similar. My favorite Queen album would either have to be Sheer Heart Attack or Queen 2. And my favorite songs would be Keep Yourself Alive, Ogre Battle, and Under Pressure with David Bowie. Also from Space Oddity, favorite Bowie persona. Okay, I love Soul Man. I also really like Halloween Jack. Gotta throw some respect on Ziggy's name, obviously. But Soul Man was just so cool. Jay asks about my favorite vintage movie. So I'm guessing by this question... We're going by films that were released between the 60s and the 70s. Uh, and my pick is going to have to be Breathless by Jean-Luc Godard. I loved that film in college and I've been thinking about it recently. It's been on my mind since yesterday morning. It was announced that Jean-Luc Godard passed away. So my pick is going to be Breathless. I also really like La Jetée, if anyone's seen that one. It's like a way trippier Breathless, so good. JK Homan asks, if you could have any record, new or old, in your collection that you don't already have, what would it be? Hands down, Gabor Zabo Dreams. That record is impossible to find. Even the represses you can't find in the United States out in the wild. So um, throwing it out there into the universe that I'm trying to find a copy of Dreams. It wouldn't be an Abigail DeVoe video without planes. Nicole asks, what are your recent record pickups, if any? What's your favorite find of all time? Okay, so I actually do have just a handful of recent pickups right here. I was sent some singles by a subscriber. My favorites of the bunch being Green Tambourine by the Lemon Pipers, I have uh, Sit Down, I Think I Love You, and of course, Wilson Pickett, Hey Jude. If you saw the Layla video, you've seen this one. As for LPs, I have some Chicago Transit Authority right here, and ooh, I just pre-ordered the first ever repressing of Tally Hall, Good and Evil. If you're not familiar, Tally Hall is like if Magical Mystery Tour era Beatles were making music in the late 2000s. Super cool stuff. So if you dig that era of the Beatles, go check out Tally Hall. As for a favorite find of all time, I think I'm gonna have to go with MC5 back in the USA. I have a little section over there in my shelves where I keep all my most recently played records before I throw them back into the shelves alphabetically. Um, back in the USA, yeah, literally has not left that section in the shelves. I play this one all the time. Marsha asks, what's your current top three most wanted albums? Off the top of my head, MC5 High Time, that's the only MC5 record I don't have. 
and I can feel myself going on a huge monkey's kick like really soon. I just had a huge Rolling Stones kick so uh, I can feel it in my bones when another kick is coming on and the next one's gonna be the monkeys. So for my other two picks uh, I'm gonna have to go with Head and Pisces, Aquarius, Capricorn, and Jones. Anne asks, where do you buy fabric? All right, I'm gonna do a little shuffle here. Okay, so for those of you who don't know, my honest to goodness for fun hobby, you know, the one hobby of mine that I don't monetize in any way, is sewing. I like to make clothes. So I made this blouse right here. Oh gosh, ignore all the lint, but I made these two skirts pretty recently. I like to buy my fabric from discount fabric stores or from fabric salvage locations. Uh, it's just most cost effective for me. I tend to like sewing with things that are pretty expensive. And that is how I get all my velvet for cheap. That's how I made my Miss Pamela dress for those of you who remember the Pamela dress and this beautiful chocolate brown velvet dandy dress with all the lace ruffles at the collar and down the front and on the sleeves. This is my most favorite dress that I've ever made. <laughs> Brit Diggity asks, best online consignment for hippie fellas like myself? Uh, RustyZipper.com. I've seen some cool vintage menswear on there, haven't bought anything for myself from that website, but I've seen some really cool stuff. Space Oddity also asks what to look out for when looking for vintage inspired clothes slash useful search terms. Right, so personally, I look for a lot of texture. I look for silks, velvets. This is a velvet vest right here. I look for corduroy, suede, tapestry fabrics. They all have a super cool vintage feel to me. I also look for fun prints. I got kind of a zigzag thing going on right here. Stripes, paisley especially. I have this flannel paisley top that I pulled from my men's pile actually. I wore this until it broke. I look for details as well. I love tops that have ties at the neck. This one does as does. This one just ties a little knot right there. Large O-shaped pulls on zippers, um, big pointy collars, color blocking, big buckles on belts. Those all have a really cool vintage feel and you don't always find them on vintage clothes, which is pretty cool. If you keep a Pinterest board, pay attention to the silhouettes you like and you can look out for those silhouettes and all of the details, patterns, prints that I just mentioned. You can keep all of those in mind when you shop, even when you're not trying to shop vintage, you know? A lot of my best pieces that I wear all the time in my kind of vintage style deal, a lot of them aren't vintage. Uh, I have these little black shorts. One pair is from Forever 21 and the other is H&M and I wear those with everything all the time. As for search terms, I literally go bare bones with them. I'll type something super basic in like 60s mod dress or 70s vintage top. Uh, I'll set a color refinement and I'll pick a price range and just scour through pages and pages and pages of results. And I found some really great stuff by doing that. Uh, this top was literally just listed as 60s ruffle top, and I got this for maybe 20 bucks. If anyone wants a full video on vintage style tips, please let me know. I would love to do one. I've been dying to do some fashion content on this channel along with the vinyl stuff. And those kinds of videos were super helpful to me. Toddy asks, what's your best super cheap thrift find? Um, this no longer fits me, sadly, but it's this beautiful dark blue silk velvet vintage 60s dress. Uh, way too small for me now, unfortunately, but I found this for 99 cents. 
As for stuff that still fits me, there's this vintage 70s handmade prairie dress that I recently photographed in. Oops, that's backwards. And I found this for $8. J. Michael asks, if you could meet any rock star, dead or alive, who would it be and what would you talk about? Oh man, uh, I was kind of throwing around a bunch of ideas for this one. I could go with the tried and true, or I could go with one of my more recent favorites like Michael Nesmith, but my pick is always gonna be Rob Tyner. Oh my gosh, I have so many things that I would like to ask him. Of course, about the music scene in Detroit in the 60s and the White Panthers and the Commune, John Sinclair and all that. But I guess what I really want to know about is the time between MC5 slash Rob Tyner Band and when he got back into music in the late 80s, early 90s. I want to know about that in-between period in his life and what he was up to then. I know Rob lived and died before I was born, but seriously, not a day goes by where I don't miss him. Um, so my pick is gonna be my Rob. <laughs> Skyclad at Dusk78 asks, Goat's Head Soup is a great record. What are your favorite songs on it? Crisscross and Coming Down Again. I am a Keith girly till I die. Tardis Rider asks, if Mick Jagger and Frank Zappa got in a knife fight, who do you think would win? Um, I don't even think there would be a knife fight. I think Frank Zappa would show up and Mick Jagger would run away screaming like the little weenie that he is. Oh, I totally forgot. This dress. Uh, my grandma found this fabric for me on the side of the road. Just a whole bolt was sitting there. True story. But this trim I found at Fabric Salvage as well. This is another one of my favorite dresses that I've ever made. Nowhere Man 39 asks, do you like guinea pigs? Um, sure, yeah. The Zigzag Wanderer asks, why are you the most beautiful and talented person in the world? Oh, Excuse me, talented who? You're the humble fish guy. Max asks, are you ever your own muse? Do you do any writing or playing music? Andre also asked, any instruments you play or want to learn to play? Uh, even when I sang, I only sang other people's songs. Uh, not one for writing music. I'm the one who writes about the music. As for playing instruments, I've had several false starts with the guitar. Uh, I don't know, I just can't make my fingers do what my brain needs them to do. Yeah, I leave the music up to Trevin. That's his job. Flanagan79 asks, what are your three favorite Simon and Garfunkel numbers? Off the top of my head, Kathy's song, Bookends Reprise, uh tie between April Come She Will and The Boxer. Sophia asks, what do you recommend as an affordable turntable for beginners? I'm gonna say either the Audio-Technica ATLP60 or 120. Those are the players that I wish I'd started with. You'll get a lot of mileage out of them, they'll treat your albums well, and if you decide that vinyl collecting isn't really your thing, then it won't have put you out of too much of your money. Sophia also asks, did you buy your record player or was it a gift? My current player, which is the Audio-Technica ATLP3, that one was a gift. I just got a new stylus for it, actually. I've never had to change out my own stylus before. Pray for me. <laughs> from Raisa, I'm a subscriber from Indonesia. I really love your fashion style and music curation throughout Vinyl Monday videos. I just entered the vinyl community last year, but actually had the fascination to vinyl and old music since a long time ago. Can you tell us how did you get into vinyl and vintage stuff? Because for me, films helped me to find good music and fashion. I really love Wes Anderson's movies. Uh, thank you, Raisa. Hi to Indonesia from the United States. 
Uh, I really dig Wes Anderson's movies too. So I guess you could say my origin story is I wasn't a really serious vinyl collector until I was 19. I got an entire record collection for free from this guy in town who's getting rid of all his records. I went there with the full intention of buying everything, but I guess my naivete charmed him because I walked away with everything for free. Now, what I did after that was I made a promise to myself that I would listen to an album from that collection every single day. Ended up doing that for almost a year, and turns out that was a really good way of, you know, figuring out what music I liked and what music I didn't like. And I'd say that experience really was how I curated my music taste. From that initial music awakening, I got really into the Beatles and the Rolling Stones. I got curious as to, you know, what did these guys look like? What did they dress like? So I turned to Google and Pinterest and I looked them up. Uh, first of all, they're all so fine. Men, what's stopping you from dressing that way? And two, I also got curious as to what their wives and girlfriends looked like and dressed like. So I looked that up on Google and Pinterest. And that's how I found out about Patty Boyd, Marianne Faithful. They're still my two biggest style inspirations. Also Anita Pallenberg, Francoise Hardy, Mick Jagger had a huge crush on her back in the day. And I decided, you know, wow, I want to dress like that. That's really cool. I also read I'm With The Band by Pamela DeBar, and that's how I got really into the GTO's Miss Pamela style. So to answer Vintage Stacy's question, which came first, your love of 60s slash 70s music or your love of the fashion, uh, the music came first. The music is why I love the fashion. Speaking of Patty Boyd, Debase56 asks, have you had any contact or conversation with Patty Boyd? Does she know how big a fan you are? Uh, no, Patty has no idea I exist. I probably won't go out of my way to contact her. She's a pretty private person these days, and I, I don't want to bother her. As for Miss Pamela, she knows I exist, and that is super cool. Mike Ramone 94 asks, what's your favorite George Harrison album? Uh, besides All Things Must Pass, that's kind of my go-to obvious pick. My favorite would be Living in the Material World. There's some great songs on this one. Christy asks, is Freak Out your favorite Mother's album? I'd say my favorite is We're Only In It For The Money. Yes, Freak Out is my favorite Mother's album, and I think it's my favorite Zappa Extended Musical Universe project. JG Sample 333 asks, can you share your video process from concept to scripting, editing, etc.? What tools and apps do you use? They're always so well done. Oh boy. Okay, so I'm just going to um, answer this question in Vinyl Monday terms. So how I decide on a Vinyl Monday episode is I have a giant list on my phone in my notes app and that's where I schedule out all my Vinyl Monday albums. Right now I'm scheduled out in stone until December. I have loose plans out to the mid-season finale in March, and I, I am already thinking about the second big one. So I, I don't mess around. I schedule these out way in advance. Then I do my background research to fill in the gaps in my knowledge about an album. I actually have a template for all my notes. So all of the Vinyl Monday episodes follow the same format. I like to listen to the album at least four times before sitting down to film an episode about it and I get in my listening time whenever I can. I listen during the research phase, I listen when I'm working on other projects, I listen in the shower, 
I listen when I'm doing my hair and makeup for my other internet human related activities and I'll listen while I'm getting ready for filming other Vinyl Monday episodes. I make multiple episodes at a time and I do this so that I'm always hearing the album with fresh ears. Then I sit down to film my A roll, my B roll, photograph the thumbnail, film the 60 second version of Vinyl Monday. I block off one or two hours to just get all of that done in one go. And I edit on, oh my god, you're all gonna laugh at me. I edit on iMovie on my laptop. No joke. I film everything on my phone and I edit everything on this little laptop. This really is all a one woman operation from the listening to the research to the filming, editing, posting, all of it. I, I do it all, just me. And finally, once it's all edited and exported and done, I schedule the video to go up every Monday morning. Uh, usually while the video is uploading, I'll get everything else done on the 60 second version of Vinyl Monday. Basically, I operate by the motto of don't make things more complicated than they have to be. I've really streamlined my video making process so it just goes as easy as possible. And if things go wrong, like, you know, footage getting corrupted or me losing my glasses, yeah, I've had a great week. I can work around that as best I can. As for a production schedule, it takes anywhere between two weeks and two days. I really do all of this whenever I have the time to do it. All right. Ed the Aging Hipster asks, why doesn't the Velvet Underground's Loaded get more love? Speaking of love, how about a Forever Changes review? Man, I don't know why Loaded doesn't get more love. It's one of my favorite albums of the 60s. The Velvet Underground is one of my favorite groups of the 60s. As for Forever Changes, by a long shot, this is my most requested Vinyl Monday album. It is this one, it's Odyssey and Oracle by the Zombies, and Surrealistic Pillow by Jefferson Airplane. And the reason I haven't done Forever Changes is because, well, I don't have Forever Changes. Love albums are super hard to find, and you'll know once I find it because it'll be on an episode. I'm not ignoring you guys on this request. We're gonna make it happen. Speaking of Surrealistic Pillow, wow, perfect. What do you think of Surrealistic Pillow and will there be a video for the album? Oh, Christopher asked that, by the way. Uh, I love Surrealistic Pillow. It's a fantastic album. And uh, <laughs> again, with Surrealistic Pillow, uh, that was the last Vinyl Monday episode that was exclusive to Instagram that was gonna be the album I kicked off the YouTube Vinyl Monday with, but I chickened out at the last minute and you guys got their Satanic Majesty's request instead. So it's gonna be a while before I come back to it, but there will be an episode on Surrealistic Pillow because I really dig that album. Our Right Art Guy asks, going to do a 1966 Carnaby Street slash Mary Quant sometime, and what LP would you show? Oh man, it's been so long since I covered an album from 66 on Vinyl Monday. I tend to skew more towards the folk slash psych stuff from that period. Uh, so to answer your question, I don't know when that's gonna happen. <laughs> gonna have to come up with an idea. Toddy also asks, <laughs> Fuck, Mary, kill, blonde on blonde, blood on the tracks, or freewheelin'. Mary, blonde on blonde, right out of the gate. That's the album that made me want to marry Bob Dylan. Fuck, blood on the tracks, and so sorry, freewheelin'. You're gonna have to be the one to go. Oh, lots of great songs on that one, but... Mm. If you'd thrown the times they are a change in or desire into this mix you would have gotten a completely different answer. <laughs> Speaking of Dylan, Tuck Khan asks, have you been to any concerts? And if you have, 
who have you seen? Love your videos. Your video on the basement tapes was awesome. Thank you. So speaking of Dylan, I was lucky enough to see him in concert in 2019. I was way out in the nosebleeds, but as soon as he came out on stage, like I didn't even care that I was that far away. I just started sobbing. It was an involuntary reaction. And I think I cried tears of happiness the whole way through. I loved that show. Most recently, I saw the Mountain Goats. They're one of my favorite groups from college and Mountain Goats shows are amazing. I was dancing and singing the whole time. If you have an opportunity to go to a Mountain Goats show, do it. Paulo asks, tell us your favorite Fleetwood Mac record. Pre-Buckingham Knicks, first self-titled record. Buckingham Knicks era, second self-titled record. <laughs> your Monkey is on Fire asks, which of your favorite artists slash musicians would you pick to form a fantasy supergroup? Um, that's, uh, this one already happened, but to put the Dirty Mac back together, or at least John Lennon, Keith Richards, and Eric Clapton for, you know, just a one-off project, like, like Blind Faith, how they only put out one album, I think that would have been so cool to see. And I would have loved a George Harrison, Mike Nesmith project. Eloise asks, how long have you been collecting records and where do you recommend looking for them? Uh, I've been collecting for about five years. As for where I recommend looking for them, once you get over the hurdle of the record store, um, record stores really intimidated me when I first started collecting, but once you get over that hurdle, they're super fun. Uh, ask around, just ask people if they have albums that they want to get rid of. That's how I found some great stuff. Um, don't count out thrift stores. I've found cool albums there as well. And Discogs. I go on there, I set the price range between $5 and $15, and that's how I find some used records that I have my eye out for. Mary asks, what advice would you give to younger Abby when it comes to music and collecting records? Eloise also asked, I'd really like to get into record collecting myself, but I'm unsure where slash how to start. Do you have any advice for a beginner? Collect what you listen to. Don't listen to what any of these guys have to say about essential listening because they don't know your taste. When you start collecting, pick up the albums that you listen to all the time first and your collection is just gonna build out from there. Fall in love with bargain bins. Pick up albums because the art is cool. Just collect what makes you happy. Basically, do it for yourself and no one else. That's why I'm doing what I'm doing. That's why I'm in the vinyl community. Oh, that was a scary noise. I'm here with everything super bright and girly and pink because that's what I wish I'd seen in the vinyl community five years ago. Paradise Overground asks, do you like music other than classic rock? Uh, Rafter Man also asked, what is your opinion on contemporary music? Other than 60s and 70s stuff, I love the psych side of grunge. I love the late 2000s indie pop boom, the early 2000s garage rock stuff, obviously. I like some IDM and I love shoegaze and second wave emo. As for me liking contemporary music, there's a lot of it that I do like and a lot of it that I don't. Joe asks, do you listen to any hip hop slash rap? And if so, favorite album? No, no, as much as I meme Death Grips, not my favorite. Um, favorite in my collection. Igor, Tyler the Creator. I am a huge Tyler the Creator fan. His past three projects I've just really been into. I think about my beautiful dark twisted fantasy at least once a week. I have a lot of memories with that record. I also have a lot of fun memories with I Want to Die in New Orleans. Presley Pearl asks, who are some of your fave modern bands um, besides Humble Fish? <laughs> I really like Always. The Lemon Twigs, 
I've been a big old Vundabar fan since 2018. They re-released Alien Blues on their most recent project, actually. Super cool. So glad that song got popular. I like MGMT. I like Arcade Fire. I've liked both of those groups since high school. Uh, I also really dig Tame Impala, especially the stuff they put out in the later 2000s. That stuff is super psych rock. Rafterman also asked, what's your favorite year in music history? Um, 1969. Abbey Road, Chord the Crimson King, and Led Zeppelin II all came out within weeks of each other. Mind-blowing. Also, Kick Out the Jams came out in February. No big deal. <laughs> Klaus asked, have you ever checked out any more obscure psych bands like July, Bobak, Jones and Malone, or Night Shadow? An interesting avenue to explore other psych bands. Uh, I haven't explored any of these bands, but I do really like the Chocolate Wristband. My more obscure 60s taste tends to go with the garage bands and the sunshine pop. D Blank asks, what is the greatest band from the 60s and why is it the Trogs? I don't know, man. I can't control myself as a certified banger. That might have something to do with it. Celia asks, what makes you cry slash laugh? Um, I keep a cry chart on my phone. It's a notes app list where I record um, when I cry and what I cried over. I do that to keep tabs on my mental health. My mental health isn't great. So when I'm crying too frequently or too much, that's when I go talk to someone. When things are all right, I cry the most over musicians who have left us. I have a true groupie heart. Uh, it seems like all my favorites are either gone or going, and that that's tough. It's tough to think about. When Dylan goes, I'll probably go into a week-long mourning period. That's really gonna hurt. As for what makes me laugh, seeing people who are really good at doing something intentionally do it wrong. For example, musicians who are like really good at their instrument intentionally playing it wrong in the funniest way. Also, I love some good slapstick humor. I was watching some shitty reality TV today and these two guys were having a really serious conversation at a golf course. And while they're having this really serious heart to heart, you just see a golf club flying across the frame in the back and I lost it. Matthew asks, any ideas from the counterculture scene you wish more people understood slash implemented today? Literature. Literature is so important. Write down your ideals, people. Um, write them down where you don't have a character limit. Post them up, hand them out, spread the word. Uh, the hippies believed that people were inherently good and that everyone deserved to have a helping hand extended out to them. That's maybe one of the most naive beliefs of the hippies. If my interest in these guys is any indication, I ain't no fucking hippie. But I don't know, I guess I miss the hippie optimism. I've said this on my channel before, my favorite thing about the 60s is that uninhibited sense of optimism, that despite all of the darkness and the uncertainty going on in the world, um, people were still turning their faces to the sun. And I'm a Zoomer, and I really wish that I'd gotten that. I always say I hope the Boomers realize how lucky they were to be able to do that, and I do wish that the idea of faith in humans and humanity that the hippies had. I wish that would come back. And last question. I think this is a really good one to wrap things up with. And Kiddo Mar Music asks, will rock and roll be back like it was in the 70s? Asking because I'm recording an album. Uh, good luck on your album, man. If you ask me, rock and roll hasn't left. Uh, it hasn't left for me. It hasn't left for those surrounding me. Rock and roll won't be back because it already is back. It never left. And that's it. That was my full Q&A. Um, my voice is tired, but it was still really fun. Thank you all so much 
for your questions. I had some really good stuff to think about while doing this. Uh, Vinyl Monday is coming back this Monday at 11 a.m. Keep your eye out. It's going to be the premiere for season two, and I'm so excited to get back into the swing of things. I'm so excited for what Vinyl Monday and for what YouTube is going to have in store moving forward. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you at my next video.